MGF's 3500kN hydraulic strut is primarily designed to be used as a bracing strut with MGF hydraulic bracing or for propping reinforced concrete piles and capping beams. The strut can be connected to 600 series or 1000 series bracing struts and can span up to 40 meters at the full 3500kN load. One end of the strut is directly compatible with 3500kN end fixings, such as end cleats or swivels. This end should always be closest to the end of the bracing strut. The other end is directly compatible with 600 series components. To connect 1000 series within the strut, two 600 to 1000 series transitions must be used within the strut. The 3500kN hydraulic strut features integral telemetry for prop load monitoring including linear displacement transducer, pressure transducer and a temperature sensor. This allows MGF and customers to monitor the pressure within the hydraulic cylinder as well as the displacement of the strut and the internal fluid temperature. Prior to assembling the strut all components should be laid out on timber skids. Once the hydraulic bracing frame has been installed, then the bracing struts can start to be assembled. For installation of the hydraulic bracing frame, please refer to the relevant safe system work guidance. The 3500kN hydraulic strut should be bolted to the 600 series components using 12 grade 8.8 M24 nuts and bolts. Ensure the joints are properly bolted together with the recommended minimum torque. MGF recommend a minimum torque of 400Nm. The end opposite to the hydraulic strut will require a 600 to 400 series transition piece. The end fixings can now be attached to either end of the strut, as this strut is perpendicular to both whalers and end cleat is required. When the strut is angled, 3500 kN swivels are used. End cleats attach to either end of the bracing strut using 9 grade 8.8 M24 nuts and countersunk bolts. If using swivels, these attach using 12 grade 8.8 M24 nuts and bolts. Ensure that the correct swivel is being used based on the strut angles and is orientated correctly. Once the required end fixing has been connected, the strut should be pumped out to just under its required extension. The hydraulic hoses should be connected to the male and female quick release valves on the strut cylinder. The lock off valve should now be opened by two gentle turns anti clockwise. The strut can now be pumped out to length by activating the lever on the motorised pump. Once the strut is pumped out to the required length, the lock-off valve should be closed with two gentle turns clockwise and the hydraulic hose is removed. The prop load monitoring equipment is housed underneath a bolted plate by the hydraulic cylinder fittings. This should only be accessed by MGF. If there are any issues with the monitoring equipment, please contact MGF. The strut is now ready to be installed and can simply be lowered into place on the pre-installed brace. The struts are normally long and unbalanced and great care must be taken in preparing the lift. Tag lines are strongly recommended. Once the strut has landed on the brace, check alignment and then preload the strut against the brace by reattaching the hydraulic hoses, opening the lock-off valve and activating the pump. Maximum recommended preload pressure is 1500 psi or 100 bar. Greater preloads can be achieved, please contact MGF for further details. Once the strut is fully preloaded, additional restraining chains should be lashed around the end cleat. This is not required if using a swivel as these will be clamped top and bottom to the brace. When installing bracing struts that are angled or knee braces, the end swivel will always bear onto a shear stop. These are welded onto the brace. Additional restraining chains around the location of the strut should be considered especially if there are multiple frames. The remaining struts can now be installed using the same process. Once all the required struts are fully installed, then excavating can continue until formation or the level of the next frame. 